Hello Techies. In our previous tutorial, we have learned basics of FTP. In this tutorial, we will learn what are the benefits we have with the FTP and also we will see how to set up the FTP to work locally on the FTP. Alright, first of all, we will see the benefits of FTP. There are many benefits we have for the FTP servers. First one, security. Second one, control. Third one, large file sizes. Fourth one, improved workflow. And finally, disaster recovery. Let me explain you about these benefits one by one. First of all, let me start with large file sizes. Whenever you are going to try to send a file to a recipient via email, in that case, large files cannot be sent. If your organization deals with the massive amount of data, you want to send the entire file by sharing through the process and then the process don't want to interrupt. In that case, you are going to use FTP server. You can use FTP server that enables you to send gigabytes of data all at once. In a such a way, you can send large size of files you can send all at a time by using FTP. Second one, security. When you send the data, especially sensitive data, you may be concerned that other parties could intercept your transfer. In fact, anyone with the right tools or a little bit of knowledge could be capable of intercepting files. You may also be concerned that your transfers may be subject to virus or malware. Fortunately, when you are going to manage the FTP server, the expert vendor is responsible for providing the security which are necessary to keep data safe. Next one, control. Another benefit of using FTP server is the level of control that you can gain over your data. Many FTP servers, especially industry leading ones, offers granular accept controls allowing your administrators to determine who can upload, download, edit, or delete or sharing files and what folders they have certain permissions within. You can give all kind of permissions by using control by using FTP. Next one, improved workflow. Having a file sharing process that is not uniform across your organization that can have negative impact on your business productivity. Instead of sharing a single file at a time, you can send large amount of data in an instant. You can also continue the work while large transfers are being made or scheduled massive transfers for nights or weekends. So your workflow will not interrupt. Last but not least, disaster recovery. When disaster strikes like an interruption to your internet connection or loss of power or even an actual natural disaster, you don't have to worry about losing work. Instead, your data is regularly and automatically backed up to another location by using FTP. Then if you need to restore your data, you can do by coordinating with your FTP vendor. These are all the benefits that we have with the FTP. Let's recap about that. The five benefits that we have, one is security, control, large file sizes transferring, another one improved workflow, and finally we have disaster recovery. These are all the benefits that what we have. All right, if you want to work with FTP actions which are available in the Power Automate desktop, you required FTP server. Now, I will explain you how to set up the FTP server in your local desktop with the simple four steps. First one is the IS configuration where we are going to make turn off and turn on your Windows systems. Second one, Windows firewall. Third one, you are going to create an FTP by using IIS. And finally, you are going to add and user for the FTP. These are the four simple steps which we are going to use to create an FTP. All right, first we will configure IIS. How can we go ahead and do that? Press Windows R on your keyboard and then type 
appvis.cpl. It will redirect to your control panel where you can have turn Windows feature on or off. Select that. And there, if you see over here, there is a lot of feature we have. There you can find internet information services. Expand that. Over here, if you see, in my local computer, the features for the FTP server has already selected. You can see over here, FTP server, FTP extensibility, FTP service. These three options you have to select and then click on OK. This is my first step. Once you have done it, you have to change the settings for the firewall. How can I go ahead and do that? By using Windows firewall. Go to control panel once again and then select the category over here as small icons and there you will find Windows Defender Firewall or Windows Firewall. Click on that. Now the first option allow an app or feature through Windows Defender Firewall. Select that and there if you see over here I'm going to change the settings over here. I'm going to give the settings for the FTP. Over here if you see I'm having you can see over here FTP server both private and public has been selected and then click on change settings once it has been done then go back to windows defender firewall again and there you can see over here turn windows defender firewall on or off click on that and there choose the option turn off windows defender firewall and both the options you have to in the public as well as the private network settings both select as turn off windows defender firewall all right, let's click on OK. Now we have made the required changes in the control panel for the Windows Defender Firewall. Along with that, we have turned on the future notifications which are related to the FTP server. All right now, I want to create an FTP server. OK, how can we go ahead and do that? Now I'm going to click once again Windows R and then I'm going to use the command INET MGR. It's nothing but IAS, Internet Information Services. I'm going to click on enter. You will find these things, Internet Information Services Manager over here. Let expand that and there you will find the sites. To create an FTP on your local, just select the sites and then right click on that and then you can find it the option add FTP site. Select that. I'm going to give the name over here as win FTP and after that give the physical path where you want to select this win FTP. This is the content directory which I'm going to select it. Select three dots over here and then I'm going to select my FTP path and then I'm going to click on next. Now this is the anonymous FTP that I'm going to create so that the port will be 21, right? And then if you see the IP address, I'm going to select 192.168.1.6. This is my local IP address, right? And then if you see over here, we are having different options like we are having FTPS, FTPS and secure FTP so that you can select SSL for different purpose. Now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to use any SSL right now. So I'm going to use no SSL and then I'm going to click on next. Over here it is asking for the authentication. I'm going to use basic and then I'm going to select specified user. I'm not going to give all the users. I'm going to give the permission to use this FTP. I'm going to specify the particular user. All right, I'm going to use one of the user which I have already created that is FTP hyphen user and I'm going to give the permissions like read and write and then I'm going to click on finish. Now if you see the win FTP I'm having under the sites, let's double click on that once again. Now you can see I'm having all the files related to that because of in my content directory I'm having all these files. Now by using this path, I can upload, download, delete the files, which are very huge size or large size of files, I can do that. Now if you see for the FTP authorization, who can access this one? I have given the user as FTP hyphen user. So that this file can be accessed by the particular user only. All right, 
Now, if I want to give the permission for the other users also, in that case, you have to create a new user and then you have to give the permissions for that. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new user. How can I go ahead and create a new user? First of all, let me go to the control panel and there you can see user accounts. Select that and there you can see manage another account. Click on that and I'm going to add a new user to this PC settings. All right. By clicking this, you can add a new user over here. AR, I have given another name. Okay, I have already created multiple users for this laptop or for this PC. All right. Now, let me show you how can we access this FTP. Now, go to browser and provide this FTP server details in a such a way, FTP colon slash 192.168.1.6 and then click on enter. Now, if you see over here, to log on into this FTP server, it is asking for the username and the password. Right now, for to access that FTP server, I have given the username as FTP hyphen user. And then I am having the password. I have given both the things and then I'm going to click on log on. If you see over here, once you have given the credentials, then it will redirect to the path. You can see over here, I'm having the directory, three directories, and after that I'm having a file, right? This is the way how we are going to connect to the FTP server. First one is IP address, another one port number, that is anonymous port 21. And after that, we are having username and password. And the mode we have, we are having two modes. One is active mode, another one passive mode. These are all the required details whenever you are going to work with the FTP actions. I hope you understand the benefits of the FTP and how to set up an FTP to work locally on your computer or to practice on the FTP actions locally. In the upcoming session, we will learn how to work with open FTP connection and close FTP connection. Thank you for watching Power Automate tutorials. If you have any queries related to this concept, please post them in the comment section. I will see you in the next session. Till then, bye-bye. Have a wonderful day.